Um, our colleague, uh, Chris Carlin, was listening to him driving home yesterday. So was I. He wants Matt Rule as the coach. So I started to do some work on Matt Rule because he seems to be the flavor of the month when it comes to, you know, the next ascending star. And I was listening to Alan Hahn driving in. Yeah, I love the station. I listen to every show. Look at you. And there was a caller who said, and we looked it up and it's true, that in seven years as a head coach in college with Temple and now with Baylor, Matt Rule has beaten two ranked teams. Two in seven years. Two. And his experience in the NFL is one year as an assistant, not as a coordinator, one year in 2012 with Tom Coughlin and the Giants. And everybody seems to think, Matt Rule's the guy. Matt Rule's the guy. That's where the big avalanche is. And i just like to know that the people that are saying that, how many people really know Matt Rule? We know that he's from this area, and that's attractive. We know that he was one of the finalists for the Jet job last year, and he wanted control over personnel. Jet said no. They hired Gase. Ironically enough, Gase did have control of everything. He got rid of the guy who had control of right. personnel and maneuvered that a guy that he's in sync with, Joe Douglas, got the job. All that being said, we were talking about this before the show. You tell me how many college coaches, how many, think about it, everybody, how many college coaches have gone on to be great head coaches in the NFL? How many, Don? How many well, have done you, it? The ones off the top of your head, you would have to say Jimmy Johnson would right. probably be one of the best that you can think of. Right. Two I Super guess, Bowl wins, and he built the, the team that won the third under Switzer, and we're not going to put Switzer in that no, category. No, because Switzer did just he left Jimmy Johnson's stuff alone, and that's why he was able to win that title with an amazing team with a ton of Hall of Famers. Um, Harbaugh would be one. Right. Went to Stanford, went to a Super Bowl with San Francisco. But the one thing about Harbaugh, though, Don, played in the NFL for a long time. True. Matt Rule does not have that on right. his resume. Well, the, the fact is we could sit there and talk. It's a handful of guys. Because Pete Carroll was in the NFL, then had success at USC, came back, and now he's one of the best coaches in the NFL with Seattle. But would you consider him a college coach? Yes, he coached in college. Tom Coughlin coached in college, but he spent a lot of time as an NFL assistant, went to Boston College, then went to the uh, Jaguars and the Giants. So uh, they're, they're just they're, there's, the answer isn't none. There, there are a few. Right. But there's a lot of guys that had tremendous success in college. It just didn't translate to the NFL. Nick Saban did not translate. No. To, and he's it, one of the greatest coaches of all time when you look at college right. coaches. You know, Spurrier is going to be up there. Oh, as a great uh, the, old ball, coach. the old ball coach. He did right. a good job with your team, right? Oh, Peter? he was tremendous. I was so glad we had him. By the way, Michael, we got into this exact same argument about basketball. And I, I feel the same way for both sports. I just think no matter how good the coach is in their respective college sport, there's a chance they'll be good, but it is not the same thing as getting, getting a proven professional commodity. It's so, so think about what we're saying here. That obviously the answer is it's a risk. It's a huge it, it, it's, risk. It's not, it's not a no-brainer not to do it. It's not a no-brainer to do it. If anything, it kind of falls on the side of you're taking a pretty big risk statistically that a college coach can translate to the NFL. And if you're the Giants, do you want to take that risk? That's the point. You can't afford to get this wrong again. You right now are 0 for your last two. So can you afford... When you really desperately need to get it right, your team has collectively won 12 games in the last three years. To roll the dice on a college coach when there is a known commodity in McCarthy who's coached in, in, in a, in a high-profile team, maybe not a city, but certainly the Packers are a high-profile team, won a Super Bowl, went to the playoffs 9 of 13 years. You're going to say, no, I, I don't need that. I'm going to take the chance that this college guy who knows the game of football, but will it translate? Because Gettleman said something very interesting in that interview. There were so many things about that interview that it kind of got lost. There's a big jump from college to the pros. We're seeing it with the players, right? He's talking right? about the players, yeah. He's talking about the players, but it's the same for the coaches. Absolutely. You're coaching different players. They're in a different stratosphere here now. They also don't want to be um, given a bunch of rules. So I mean, you're going to have to make that. What you can do in college, you can't do in the pros. Can you make that transition? Yes, you can make the transition, but do I want to take that chance for a guy that had one season of NFL experience as an assistant to come over and take over this job in the biggest city in North America for one of the flagship teams in the NFL, but more importantly for a team that is desperate 
desperate to start winning again. Can you take that chance? Uh, I mean, uh, there's another college coach that was not a good college coach, Peter. A great one. A great one. <laughs> Lou Holtz. He quit. He resigned. Before the end of the year with the Jets. He quit. So, I mean, is, is Matt Rule a better head coach than Lou Holtz was in college? And I don't want to be on the anti-Matt Rule um, bandwagon here, but I just don't understand everybody's obsession with this guy who's won two games against ranked teams. He built up a terrible Baylor program that is was in the, uh, I mean, the dumps because of all the awful things that happened. Temple, he built them up as well. So he's done a good job building up programs. But has he won big games? He just lost the ball game that he was in. And the reason he get the jet job is he wants control over personnel. You're going to give this guy control over personnel? You're going to give him control over Dave Gettleman? Well, over who makes the 53-man well, well, roster? Well, let me I, ask you this. Uh, go, go ahead, Peter. No, uh, well, I was going to say, uh, uh, what, what is it the Giants need? How about, can we start there? What is it you need? What is the number one thing you're trying to bring to this football team? Because you can really only discuss the kind of coach you want after you know what that is. Because these are not a one-size-fits-all situation. Well, I need somebody, and it was admitted by Gettleman, that is going to make my quarterback better and take my quarterback to the next level. I think that's important. You've got a young quarterback entering his second year. He's now all of a sudden going to have a second coach and maybe a second system to have to deal with. I think that's got to be priority number one. I can't win without my quarterback, so don't I have to find a coach that's going to make my quarterback better? And, and yeah. another thing, I know you're gonna, you guys are going to laugh at me about this. You want to be the giant coach, buddy? Get out of Cabo. Do the interview now. Unless the Giants have already told him you got the job. Now, Mike McCarthy's being interviewed today by the Giants. You tell me how you sit down and you interview Mike McCarthy, who has pelts on the wall, as Bill Parcells would say, and then you interview Matt Rule, who could be a bright, bright young coach, but has never done it at this level, ever. And you're going to throw him into the cauldron of the New York football Giants, who've been here since 1925, who've been miserable failures since their last Super Bowl, and you're going to give him that job. I, 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 I'm going to be shocked if they do it. Now, well, and I did mention, because Peter asked what kind of coach, I, I think it's a major priority to find somebody that can take my quarterback to the next level. But I also need somebody that can coach. Can he in-game coach? Can he make right. decisions? Because ultimately you have to win the games. Once the quarterback becomes great, I'm also going to need a great coach. That's what happened with Shermer. They hired Shermer because he was going to try to make Eli better. That didn't work, and then he was left to being a coach, and he couldn't do that either. So, you know, you need to coach. But to answer your question, Peter, once I've established you can coach in this league, can you help make my quarterback better? I think that's important. Well, but let's, let, let's also think about this, Peter. He didn't take the Jets job because he wanted control. I don't think he changed his mind. So if the Giants want rule, then why did you keep Gettleman? Right. If you know the guy that you're going to hire is going to want to buy the groceries. So by keeping Gettleman, doesn't that take rule out of it? Unless you're going to convince rule that he's, he's going to take an NFL job that he's waited so long for and not get everything that he wants? But you know what? He, the, the job he dreamed about was the Jets. And he demanded so much he didn't get the job. The Giant job was not the job he dreamed about. The, he, was, he grew up a Jet fan. So... Um, Maybe Gettleman is prepared to give him all the power and Gettleman is just do the, you know, the work, the, the grunt work, the scouting and give him reports and let him make the decisions. But again, you're going to hand, hand all that responsibility to a, what, a 41-year-old guy? He could end up being the next Bill Belichick. He could be. And I could end up being completely wrong and have egg on my face. But the obsession, and we're going to talk to Chris Carlin at 645 because he is a big Matt Rule fan. Yeah. The obsession with this guy... To be the guy, I I need to have more proof that because and, I'm sorry, there's no sure things in life. Has but this hiring for the Giants has to be as close to a sure thing as you could possibly have. Has David Deals said much about Matt Rule? No. I'd be curious. We should try to talk to David Deal because he coached him on the on the line with the Giants. I'm curious to hear what those pro players who were coached by him have to say about them and how vocal they are. Because I'll tell you. And we all know none of the three of us are big college football guys. But I'll tell you one thing. Coaching at Temple and Baylor, as big a program as Baylor is, still, you're not talking about Lou Holtz. You're not plucking someone from Notre Dame. It's, it's a, it's a, I know we live in an era now where it's, it's kind of cool to bring on a young coach, a young assistant who's 37 years old, whatever. But to look at the experience of a coach whose success come at places like Temple and Baylor, 
It, that, that's and, all, giving that a lot of gravitas. And Michael's right. He may turn out to be the next Jimmy Johnson. Could be, be the great, perfect hire. But it's a huge but, roll but, of the but dice. Here's the other thing. And, I, and listen, I'm a big Mike McCarthy fan. I thought he should have been the Jets coach. I want him to be the Giants coach. All right? The Giants are interviewing them today. him today. What, what is he going to tell you that you're not going to like? Nine playoff appearances in 13 years. Won a Super Bowl. The reason he lost his job is Green Bay because he couldn't get along with Aaron Rodgers, which to me seems like a very difficult thing to do anyway, right, Peter? I mean, this is a, a, an established Hall of Fame quarterback. I don't well, think he also gotta... doesn't get along with his own family. Right. So, the, <laughs> so what I'm saying is it's not that big of a deal he couldn't get along with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers doesn't get along with a lot of people. And they made it work for a long time. Let's and they be made clear. it work for a long time. And I don't think you got to worry about Daniel Jones' ego getting in the way of this hire. I think he'll get along fine with Mike McCarthy. And if you know what, 10 years from now, if they don't get along and they've won a Super Bowl, who cares? Right now, what's wrong with Mike McCarthy where I've got to go to an unknown college coach who's never coached on the NFL level as a head coach, and i got to bypass a guy with 13 years' experience and a Super Bowl ring? Here's what would worry me about McCarthy. we try a little McCarthy. too hard, maybe? If, if McCarthy comes in today and said, listen, I'm running a West Coast offense, that's what I run. Like, he supposedly had the McCarthy project the last year, yes. what he didn't do well, what he can change. The Giants don't want to run the West Coast offense on the East Coast with the weather here. They don't want to do that. That's not the type of quarterback Daniel Jones is. If he's if he's flexible about you know what the offense could be, and if he's going to bring in somebody that's going to run the offense with him, that's the stuff I want to hear. I also want to hear if I'm the Giants and the people doing the interviewing, what went wrong with Aaron Rodgers? And when you talk to Mike McCarthy now, and he's had a great PR push, by the way. When you talk to him now, we didn't, I'd have a problem with with um, Rodgers. And if you think about it. How many relationships in, in professional sports last 13 years? You could see that Belichick and, and Brady, they don't love each other. That's fraying. That's coming close to the end. The, the fact that Bro, you know, Brady is 42 years old, that pushes it along. But they don't like each other. When you're in this sport and you have the kind of ego, and a lot of these guys are just egomaniacs, they don't want to be told what to do for 13 years. Sooner or later, it just runs its course. Tom Coughlin with the Giants ran its course, probably ran its course three years before they got rid of him. Yeah. Right? Is that fair? Well, gonna, listen, 13 years in one place is a long time, especially when Joe the quarterback Girardi, is there for a while. 10 years with the Yankees, ran its course. And when, when you're that long in one place, you're going to run your course, you're going to rub people the wrong way, your personality, your little quirks are going to get on people's nerves. Maybe that's what happened with McCarthy. Maybe he's the complete nozzle. We have no idea. But if, if from the outside looking in, who's the guy who's a sure bet? The guy who has a Super Bowl ring or the guy who has two wins against ranked teams in seven years as a college coach? I, get, I think the guy with the Super Bowl ring is the surest bet. It's